Hello everyone, welcome to the Trick Gates Club show. I'm Kath Armstrong, um, creator and owner of the Cheap Skates Club, and I am so glad to welcome you to my craft area tonight, even if we're not talking about craft. We're going to talk about questions, or am I going to try and answer your questions tonight? So I already have a couple um, that have popped up, so if I keep looking away, don't worry, I'm just keeping track of the questions as they come in. Just a couple of things before we get started. If you're going to ask a question, could you please put it in all caps so that we know it's a question and we'll be at, it'll stand out so we can see it much easier. And there is a bit of a time lag between when you type in your question and it actually pops up in front of me, I get to read it and then I get to answer it. So just be aware that the answer might take a couple of seconds to come. I'm impatient. I'm sure you've got the patience of Job, so you'll understand. Now, um, who have we got with us? We have Maureen. Maureen, I have to tell you, we were talking um, last week about the tomatoes, and I said, nah, weren't doing very good at all. Oh, my gosh, they've grown about eight inches since Monday. I was just out before looking at them. They're like this high. They've just gone. Pachoo. So this week's hot, humid, rainy, weird weather has obviously been good for shooting tomatoes along. So here's hoping they'll keep going and I'll get loads of tomatoes this summer. Just thought I'd pop that in. Hello, Barb. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Freya, Lynette, Diana, 301 Jules, Estelle. Oh, Estelle, no, I, I'm very impatient. I like oh, no. I instant. I'm I'm one of those, I've got to have it straight away. So I understand if people get frustrated with the, the lagging. I should be used to it because I've worked with like this for years. But anyway. Hi, Victoria. Nice to hear from you. What's the weather like in Cal? hot is it as hot here or are you in the, are you getting that cold change that cold front that's coming our way uh, miss aussie thunder narelle um, veronica <laughs> no impatient just makes you frustrated and gray look at me no veronica it doesn't make you productive what was that um less haste more speed my mum used to say um hello felicity 38 oh i was 30, got to 36 here today, so not too far off. Uh, yes, Jules, I have started using the planner. I've started planning for next year in the in the planner. Um, I, I'm starting to do the um, menu plans, and this is really going to confuse you because I've already done next year's menu plans. They're all done. So the menu plans that are going into the planner now will be for 2021. I like to plan ahead. I like to plan ahead, folks. Okay, now I'm just going to zip up to the top of the comments for a moment because Maureen's jumped in real quick and asked if I could talk about paying board in older children. I'm pretty sure she means getting older children to pay board. I don't know what that is. That's a pretty tricky thing. It's a personal thing too. Honestly, it's a personal thing. I think that if kids don't learn how a household runs and what the expenses are, then when they are independent and on their own in their own homes, it's going to come as a heck of a shock to them and they're going to flounder. So by all means, I think board is one of those, hmm, personally, everyone should pay it how much is very, very personal and very individual. I did some quick checking because I think $40, personally, I think $40 a day for full board is a bargain because where else could you live with bed, be housed, be fed three meals a day, get your cleaning done, get your laundry done and have your utilities, as in gas, electricity, water, paid for? For $40 a day 
nowhere. Pensioners in nursing homes pay more than that. So, and they get less. So I'm thinking $40 a day is a bargain. But if your adult child is an apprentice and only earning, um, you know, three or $400 a week, then taking $280 of that for board is a big chunk out of their pay. So perhaps you can negotiate so that they pay $20, which would be $140 a week, and do extra chores and buy extra chores. I don't mean cleaning up after themselves or anything like that. It could be washing the windows, um, cleaning the gutters, things like that. So there's, um, or doing your ironing, because ironing runs out about $35 a basket. So, you know, a basket of ironing takes probably an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how, how, how full you can pack it. So things like that. Now, Hannah's got her hand oh, up over probably. here. She's forgotten it. <laughs> It'll come back to her. So that's my opinion. But, of course, convincing your your border that they need to pay that is hard when you're the parent and they're the child, be they an adult child or not, because you're their parent and it's sort of in their mind that you've always looked after them, so you should just continue to look after them. But there comes a point in time when, no, they're, they're adults. They get to stand on their own two feet they have to learn how to do that. Now, it's nice to be able to do that, have them do that in your own home. And I'll fess up and say all three of our kids still live here with us, but they pull their weight. They come and go as they please. They don't impinge on Wayne's and my um, freedom. Now, we've raised our kids. They're all legal adults. They come and go. We do have house rules, as in if they're going out, they need to tell someone where they're going roughly what time they'll be back and it's nice if we know who they're going with we give them the same courtesy when we're going out I might say oh, I'm going to cards and it's at um, Coburg and I'll be back about 5 5 30. just it's just common courtesy and I would think that if you were in a share house or a flat or something like that you would have the same courtesy for your flatmates so just in case suddenly someone realises, oh, hang on a minute, Hannah hasn't been around for about four days. I wonder where she's gone. It, it's sort of important from a security point of view too. So we have those rules in place. And, you know, Wayne and I go off on our trips all the time. Not all the time. I wish it was all the time. But we're often away and we go away. It might be for a weekend or it might be for four days. It could be five or six weeks but we still tell them roughly where we're going, when we'll be at certain places and when to expect us back. Just so if something goes wrong here, they know. If they don't hear from us for a couple of days, they can sort of know roughly where we should be and try and hunt us down if they need us, that sort of thing. Now, I did some checking. Everyone ready to um, be shocked? Because I said $40 a day. One of the places um, I just looked up, $370 a week. And that's breakfast and dinner, no lunches. It includes laundry, um, electricity, cleaning once a week. That's it, $370 a week. Ouch. Um, Somewhere else came up with $60 a day, so that's seven sixes are uh, $420 a week. Is that right? Seven sixes? Mm -hmm. Six sixes is 36, yes. 400. It's very expensive. I'm so glad I'm not a boarder anywhere because it's really expensive. So perhaps if your adult child is um, objecting to having to pay board, you might need to sit down with them and call on... on Professor Google and do some research and let them see just how well off they are with what you're asking them to pay. The other alternative is if, and again, this is a personal thing, 
if they are saving for something specific, they might be saving for a house deposit or um, to finish their education. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Oops. No, I'm not. Yes. Oh, sorry, folks. Hope I didn't deafen anyone. Okay. Um, if they're saving for something specific, then perhaps you can, it's an, again, entirely up to you, you can be generous and say, we'll take half in board, but you must put the other half into savings and keep a track of it. And that's probably um, micromanaging, helicopter parenting or something, I don't know, depending on the age of the child and the maturity of the child because some kids at 16 are far more mature than others at 25. So, you know, you know, you know your child, your adult, you know them and you know their character and, and their weaknesses and their strengths. So you get to decide. It's not an easy conversation to have, especially if they've not been expecting it. So it might be one that drags out for a couple of weeks um, that you might have to just sort of drip feed to them. But I think it's important. You could point out that, you know, you still have to pay food, you still have to pay gas, electricity, water, telephone, internet, um, council rates, insurances, mortgage if you've got one, all that sort of thing, but they don't have to pay. But they're using all those things. So if they want to get the benefit from it, they have to pay because there is no such thing as a truly free lunch. Um, hope that helps, Maureen. I'll think on it some more, and if I pop up with anything else, I'll let you know. So then, next one was Barb. Wanted to know if I could talk about spending plans and going back to basics. Okay. Spending plans, don't overcomplicate it. If you want to go back to basics, you want to keep it, keep it simple. So... Don't overcomplicate it. I like pen and paper. I know you can do it on your computer, you can do it on your phone, you can go to the Money Smart website and download a program that will do it for you. There's apps that will do it for you. They all make it really complicated, really, really complicated. And if it's complicated, you're just not going to do it because you lose enthusiasm, it takes time, it's a right royal pain to remember to do it. Pen and paper, a good old notebook and a pen and paper and keep it simple. What comes in and what goes out. Hopefully your outgoings will be less than your, than your incomings so that you have something left over and that can go into your emergency fund to pay off debt, to save. But don't make it, don't make it really complicated. Keep it as basic as you can to start with. So it'll be rent mortgage, rental mortgage, um, loan repayments, food, gas, electricity, water, telephone, um, insurance. If you have a car, you'll be putting some away for the registration, a little bit for petrol, and then all the other things aren't really necessary. So you need to go, if you want to go back to basics, go back to the absolute bare bones that you need to live, which is all those things, and then anything else like um, entertainment, not necessary. Holidays, not necessary. Gifts, you can find lots of free things today. Um, what else? Hairdressing, makeup, magazines, all those things, none of those are necessary. So you need to go right back to the absolute bare bones basics, just the things that you need to live. So a roof over your head, um, food in your mouth, clothes on your back, I suppose, because we can't run around naked. Not that I'd want to, but, you know. But, again, if your clothing doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. So go back to basics. Now, to do that, if you're not used to it, can be quite an eye-opener and a bit of a shock. So perhaps do it slowly. But I would try it with um, good old pen and paper for a while, notebook. In the new planner, there's... Um, budget for each month and each week you can work it out in the new planner we have um in the how to's no tools and guides on the tip sheets page under tools and guides there's some um 
basic budget information and budget sheets there that you can download and use. But keep it simple. Once, once you're really established in your budget, in your spending plan, and you know exactly how it's just rolling along, it's working perfectly, then you can start to make it a bit more in-depth. So you can break things down a bit more to different categories if you want to. But to start with and to take the pressure off, just keep it really simple. Okay, so Kathy, any ideas to help an exhausted full-time working mum to four would be helpful. Well, I'm not sure how old they are, but perhaps um, getting them to pitch in around the house um, if they're old enough and from 12 they can do this. Give them all one night a week to cook. So if you've got four, that means there's four nights you don't have to cook. You're only left with choosing dinner for three nights. Now you can work up a meal plan and I would for a little while to get them into the habit of it, work up a meal plan and that way you know you've got the ingredients in the house to make those meals. Stick to simple things for them, spag bowl, tacos, enchiladas, um, baked beans on toast. Teach them how to make a really nice omelette, something like that. Again, basics that are really simple so that they're learning to cook. You get a night off, so you've got that 30 minutes or 45 minutes, however long it takes you to get a meal on the table to do something else, even if it's just sit down and kick your shoes off and relax for a little while, gives you time. It also, it also helps to teach them just how hard it is to get dinner on the table because it's not just making, it's the cleaning up too. Because if you make it, you clean it up. Get them to help with the laundry. If they're old enough, they can do their own laundry. Allocate, give them all one day a week and that's their laundry day. So they have to put all their clothes out, get them washed, hung out, brought in, ironed, put away, change their beds, change their towels. Get them all to do it on one day. And they, again, that's giving them responsibility, but it's also teaching them a life skill that will stand them in good stead in the future. <clears throat> if your children are too young for that, or you don't think they're going to, to do it without kicking and screaming, then look for things that are going to make your life easier. Now, if you're working full time, what can you cut back on so you could get a cleaner once a fortnight, even if it was just to do the heavy things like cleaning the showers, um, vacuuming, right through, mopping the floors thoroughly, just to take the pressure off you. Can you shop online and get it delivered? that may not necessarily always be the cheapest in terms of being in store to pick up um, bargains and markdowns and things, but the advantage is you've done a meal plan, you've got your shopping list, you've bought everything, you don't need to go to the shops, you've got it delivered, so all you have to do is put it away. So saving the trip to the shop, that was a big click, saving the trip to the shop, you're saving time wandering around and you quite possibly are saving money on impulse buys because if you're tired and you're exhausted and you just want to get in and out and it never works like that, there's always going to be a hold up. That's when you'll give in to buying the packet of donuts or the cream cake or picking up the barbecue chicken and the bread rolls instead of baking do with cheese and Vegemite that you've got at home. So anything you can think of, that will save you a little bit of time is always a good thing, even if there is an initial cost. And I guess I was listening to, I think it was Virginia Trioli on ABC Radio here in Melbourne this week, and she was talking about a study that's been done about the actual cost of working, the actual cost of working full time for a wife and mother. And some, some of the women that were in um, fairly medium paid jobs were, were actually out of pocket by anything up to $800 a month by the time they pulled out um, childcare, before and after school care, all the extra um, eating out meals, home delivery takeaways that they got because they were exhausted the travel, all those sorts of things. And I'm thinking, 
you, you couldn't afford to, well, they can't afford to work. If it's costing them to work, you'd wonder why they do. So it's not always to our advantage to work outside our homes. Again, it's a personal choice and I have to be like, I like working. So, but my kids are all grown up now, so they look after themselves. But when you have little ones, perhaps it's not worth it even if you think that money coming in is going to boost your coffers to allow you to pay off the mortgage sooner or um, pay down the debt, get rid of the credit card or something, you really need to do your sums really, really well because I was quite stunned at how much it was costing some of these women to work. And I was thinking, I'm so glad I don't have kids in daycare. That's outrageous. Okay. I hope that was um, a little bit helpful for you, Kathy. Perhaps the other thing that I like to do is um, for meals especially because I know by, by 2 o'clock in the afternoon I don't even want to think about having to cook tea. So if I haven't planned it, haven't got it organised in the morning, it's just going to be slapdash something even if I look at the meal plan and go, yeah, it's going to be, it's just not going to work. So perhaps try and cook ahead. So, for instance, on Monday night, you'll be actually preparing and cooking Tuesday night's dinner while Monday night's is heating. Or if you have a slow cooker, take advantage of it. If you have a pressure cooker, take advantage of it. Um, freezer meals are always good. Anything that you can do in bulk. When I do pasta sauce, I do four times the recipe. We use one and I put the other three in containers in the freezer. So for, for four pasta meals... I don't need to worry about making the sauce. And if I forget to take it out of the freezer in the morning, I can just nuke it and it's ready to go by the time the pasta's cooked. Little things like that. It doesn't take any longer to cook four times the recipe as it does to cook just single single portion, but it saves a heap of time in the future. So little things like that, making lunches ahead, or preparing as much as you could ahead for school lunches and keeping them in the fridge is always good. It sounds a little um, expensive, extravagant perhaps, but when our kids were at school, I had 15 drink bottles. They each had a drink bottle for every day and I would fill them up once a week, put them in the freezer and then just take one every morning. I made up in the weekend, I'd make up um, 15 lots of morning tea and put it in the freezer. They'd take one in the morning. It was so much easier and it would take probably an hour, an hour and a half on a Sunday afternoon to do that. But I didn't have to worry about the mornings when life was busy and frazzled. I also made sure that their school clothes for the week were out and we used those... Um, hanging um, organisers that you get from $2 shops and whatever. And so Monday's uniform was there, Tuesday was sports uniform, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was swimming, so all the swimming gear was all there. So every day they got up and they'd have socks, undies, shirts, shorts or tunic or whatever, jumpers were all there ready for them to just take it out and get dressed and go. It saved a lot of time um, in the mornings looking for things we could have been out of the house in under half an hour if we'd really pushed ourselves back when the kids were at school. So little things like that. The initial setup will take you probably a couple of weeks to get into the swing of it, but once you do, it just becomes habit and it makes life so much easier. Okay, now um, I'm scrolling down. Uh, all right. Okay. Oh, Kathy, great. Oh, you're a school teacher. Then I'm really sorry, but <laughs> your work day doesn't finish when you come home. Um, you do a lot of out of hours work. Laundry would kill you if your kids are old enough. And look, honestly, from eight or ten, they can start to do the laundry. Teach them how to sort it. Even if you have to get up and turn the machine on and then empty it. They show them how to hang it over clothes horses if, if you needs be. Um, 
I'm glad you like stockpiling and meal planning. They're two things to me, they're common sense. You just do it, but not everyone does. Okay. All right, now, it still works, yeah. Childcare is very expensive, and unfortunately, the, the childcare workers aren't paid very well, so um, it's um, really bad. Hello, Julie. All right, okay. Yes, yeah, school does require so much. Now, any more questions? So, oh, did I? Oh, sorry, folks. Okay, so here's Zach. Let me answer Zach. He's, um, and hello and welcome. Um, sole father of two boys, trying to steer them in the right direction. Yes, my boys do live the cheapskates way. Now, I have to tell you, three kids, two boys and a girl. We I'm have... Best. Hannah is the best at cheap skating. Yes, she is. She is her mother's daughter. We have Mr. Extravagant, who earns really good money, saves for what he wants to buy and buys it. Then we have Mr. I'm so mean and stingy. You know, I'm, I'm going to die with the first five cents I ever had. So they're sort of extremes, um, but they manage, you know. None of them have debt, and when they want to do things, they save up for it and then do it. Hannah's saved up and paid cash for her overseas trip. She saved up and paid cash for her car. Um, she still has, she's almost there for a house deposit, and she did all of that on um, part-time part -time work. work. So she's, and she still lived a really good life. In fact, sometimes I think, I don't know how she does it, but she still lived a really good life. So I guess encouraging them is important, not, um, not criticising, and that's really hard. When you see them going to make some, do something really dumb that's going to cost them big time, it's really hard to, to not jump in and just ban them from doing it it's a little easier perhaps I know with um, our boys I can sort of say to them perhaps this would be a better option and we'll talk about it we'll go away and discuss it if I do my homework first so I can go fact 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 and hand them the evidence that always helps too getting upset doesn't doesn't work but if they make mistakes this is really hard, not bailing them out. And I don't mean causing them hardship, but I mean letting them work out how they're going to get out of that mistake themselves. Offer, by all means, offer advice, but don't do it for them. Um, yeah, so Mr. I see it, I want it, I'll save up for it and buy it is getting better. Um, although if I see one more camera or one more train come into his um, into his room, I think I'll scream, but it's, it's his money. As long as he puts some away for a rainy day because we always, we teach the kids 10, 10, 80, save 10, give 10, so, um, live off 80. And that seems to be what they're doing. Now they're not like his, I don't know what's in his bank account it's not my business now he's an adult um as long as he knows that he can come to us for advice but he can't come to us for money um all righty now so jules asked me if i had the study using plan i said yes scroll down scroll down to 301 jules again to 301 jewels again. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. When creating a spending plan, do you calculate for a year and divide by the number of pays? Yes. Um, get your bills, 
for you to work out what your bills, the average of your bills will be. So you get your bills for the last 12 months, total them up and divide them by however many if you get paid monthly, divide them by 12. That's how much you need to put away. I usually add 5% each year to the um, total just because they go up. They go up. Um, they, even if we use less, they still seem to go up. So that's what I do. Yeah, if you get paid fortnightly, then you've got 26 pay. So you divide it by 26. You paid weekly, 52, um, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. 10, 12, 14 and 17. Kathy, they're all well and truly old enough to be, um, to be running the house. You could leave a list and expect them to do just do the chores. And they probably will all lock up. And you will still need to supervise because you're teaching them. They're, they're not going to instantly know how to do the ironing. You have to show them. They're not going to instantly know how to um, make potato salad. You have to show them. You teach them. And if that means for the first couple of times you hover and stand by and guide, don't do it for them, but show them and tell them how to do it, then... That's what you have to do because after that, they just do it. They just do it. It works really well. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, oh, gosh. I think I, Estelle, I think I was washing dishes from about five or six. I know I was cooking at seven because my mum worked from three till 11 so we were home till Dad got home. We were home for about two and a half hours in a row. So I would have to, I started dinner. So I'd do the peel the veggies and whatever. And in the mornings, in winter, it was my job to get up and cook breakfast. Um, and I did that. I still have the scar to prove it. I was um, a warming milk, boiling milk on the stove to put over our cereal. And I knocked, oh, I'm a bit of a class not the saucepan, and it flicked up and went all over my arm. So I've still got the scar on my arm from the, the burn. But, yeah, I was only about seven when I was doing that. Custard was my favourite thing to make. I loved making custard. So we ate lots of custard for desserts and breakfast. We, we got custard for breakfast with coconut on top. Yum. That was the best breakfast ever when we were kids. So... Oh, right. Write down. So, how do you calculate annual, annual expenses when starting out? Okay. Well, congratulations on getting a house. That is great news. Well, look, you can estimate if you um, um, know roughly what your bills were from your last residence use those to estimate what they will be as a new house. Um, but if you're buying, of course, you need to add in house insurance, contents insurance, rates. Um, so you'll need to add those in. Now, council will be able to show you what the, the rates will be for the next 12 months so that you know how much you need to budget for them. Um, but you will need to build that bill fund up slowly. So that's where I usually suggest you have a bill account and you just transfer the money into that account and let it sit so that you transfer it in. It sits. When the bills come in, you take it out of that account. You just make a notation of what's come out and how much it was. And it probably takes actually takes about 15 to 18 months to get into the flow and to have a fully funded bill account. But it's well worth doing. Well worth doing. Yeah. Did I miss one? Where? No, can't see it. Can you read it, Jimmy? It says hi, Kath. I'm at a loss as to how much money to put on odd jobs for my grandson. Do you have any suggestions? Depends on how old he is, but I wouldn't go more than $2 a job and it would have to be a really good, a really um, complicated job and he would have to do it really well to earn that money. Now, one of um, I have a friend who used to pay her grandson to wash her car 
and to help her around the garden and stuff like that. And she paid him, if he washed the car and helped her in the garden, he got $5, which is fair enough because it was probably two or three hours work for him, but he was only eight. So $5 for an eight-year-old is a fair whack of money. I'm not saying you use them as slave labour, but, you know, depending on their age, if they're older, then you need to be a bit more realistic in what you pay them compared to what they would earn at McDonald's or supermarket or whatever. Um, and again, there are some things that they should just do out of love. So if you're there, you're his grandma and you need the lawns mode, in our family that's a love job. You don't get paid for cutting grandma's grass or you didn't get paid for cutting grandma's grass. Um, it's a bit like every week when I take mum shopping, one of the boys would come with me and they'd carry her parcels, push the trolley for her, steer her in the right direction. You know, they generally took care of her. But that was a love job. They didn't get paid for that. They did that out of love for their grandma. So he's 10. He's 10. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, maybe $3. $3. A job, depending on the job and what it is, yeah. Although, you know, if it's something as simple as emptying the dishwasher, 50 cents. It takes all two minutes to empty a dishwasher. If it's something more complicated, like cleaning your car, vacuuming the inside, dusting it, wiping out the wiping the windows and throwing out any trash, then maybe that could be 3 or $4. If he's going to wash it, maybe it could be $6 with an inside clean. It's been a long time since I had to pay little kids to do jobs can you tell but I think how is this having too much money too soon just builds expectations that are unrealistic I know um, we've just had the the football drafts done and I was looking at some of the salary packages for some of those young people they are young men they are 20, 21, 19 years old, and they earn way more, way more than they should for playing a game of football. It's a game, people. It's not rocket science. It's a game. But they have so much money that when they go off the track and they end up in trouble, is it any wonder? Because they just have too much money and they have this expectation that life will always give them money. Now, we know a footballer, an ex-footballer, and he had that issue. While he was playing, he earned great money, but he didn't have a trade. He didn't have a, a, a career. He didn't have a skill. So when his football career was over, the money stopped, but his spending and his lifestyle didn't, and he ended up just about broke and with nothing to fall back on. So... It's not always a good thing to give little ones and young people too much too soon and build that expectation that they're always going to always going to have it because it's trust me, I know it can disappear like that. It can disappear in a matter of minutes. In the time it takes to be told that you your job's finished and then your husband comes home and says, oh, I got retrenched, which was in the space of about 15 minutes. So it can go like that. So don't, don't pay them so much that they think of it as their right to be paid that much because he's 10 years old. He has no, he has no skills. He's, you know, he's just a kid. Work on it like that. Okay. Vicky, is that for all of your bills, credit cards, utilities? Can I think that's 5%. Oh, adding the 5%, Victoria? Yes, I do. Um, we don't have credit cards, so but our electricity, gas, water, insurances, the rates, all those things I just automatically, when I'm working out for next year, increase by 5%. If we use it, we use it. If we don't, we don't. At the end of the year, whatever's left 
it's I zero those accounts out and I transfer that money into our save whatever's left into our savings account. So we start from first of January, we start on a zero um, budget again, which is probably going to even. Well, I still, I don't know. Um, I only burnt myself once. It was an accident. It could have happened if mum was there. It could have happened, you know. Thomas was 16 and got his tongue stuck in the mix last year. True. You know, I mean, accidents happen. I don't think, I don't think, I was going to say molly coddling, but it's not molly coddling. I don't think um, not teaching kids to do things from a very young age is wise because they don't know how to do basic stuff. And you've got to know what's hot and what's cold. And exactly, you have to know what's hot and what's cold. And it's like saying, it's like saying to a baby, oh, it's Bernie's, don't touch, it's hot, it's Bernie's. If they've never been burnt, they don't know. Now, you don't want them to touch it and you don't want those little fingers to get burnt. But I can guarantee if they touch a hot kettle or something and oh, it's hot, they understand and they know then not to touch it. So I think um, teaching kids from the minute they can toddle with even things like picking up the toys from when they can toddle, if they can throw them out of the toy bin, they can throw them back in the toy bin. Teaching them and giving them responsibility isn't a bad thing. Okay, now, you found it. Found what, Dal? The question. Um, no. Three or one Jules wants to know, after calculating a spending plan for each pay, do you adjust or update it after each bill? No. No, Jules, I don't. I don't, the bills, um, on our spending plan, I know how much I need to move into the bill account each pay. And that gets moved over. When the bills come in, they're direct debited. At the end of the month, I go through and I pick the bills that have been paid. So electricity, gas, phone, for instance. And hopefully they're under what I've what's in the um, account for them. If it's not, then I have to make up the difference from somewhere. It usually averages out, but no, I don't. Um, I just let it carry over. I tend to balance at the end of the year now because I know that we have the money in the bill account to cover it. If you're just starting out and you don't have the money in the bill account, then we'll need to track it a bit more closely and you may need to um, increase how much you're putting into those accounts until you get your bill account into the routine and until you know for sure what your bills are going to be each time they come in. Um, okay. <laughs> the years, Charmaine, the years slip away really quickly. <laughs> okay, Jess, she has a car bill account where she puts money week every week for her yearly car bills, insurance and rego, and she puts some in for service and current services. Um, that's just that's about right if you have an emergency fund then anything unexpected would come out of your emergency fund but you're, you're doing the right thing because you're covering um, all the all the um, absolute necessary so the registration the insurance um, petrol rego you've got services and car maintenance all being put put aside so if anything happens that is more than what's in that account, then that comes out of your emergency fund. And that's why we have an emergency fund. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, Jules, I'm glad I've been able to help you. Oh, ask away. Ask a question. That's what we're here for. So, all right. So, yeah, look, my mum used to say to me, she was so grateful that she wasn't raising children today. And I'd just go, 
oh, is it really that much different to when she raised us? Because I'm sort of raised, I, we raised our kids the way I was raised. So they learned to pick up after themselves. They learned to say please and thank you. They learned to um, do as they were told. You know, we taught them all those things. And we also taught them how to clean the bathroom and how to make their beds and how to pick up their clothes and all those things. We taught them. You know, Wayne taught the boys how to do stuff in the car. I taught Hannah how to sew and I tried to teach her how to knit. That was a five tons and I still don't know. It was a dead loss. She just she just cannot get the hang of those. I'm different anyway. knitting perfectly fine. Um, but so we we did that. So I don't think that raising our kids was particularly hard, but we also were honest with them about our financial situation. So they knew we didn't have money. If the other kids at school had um, Game Boys and Playstations and all that sort of stuff, they knew we didn't have money for that. They just knew. And I and I started from I think I said this before from when we were very little. Alan used to. He was just tiny and he, he asked me for um, a Thunderbirds rocket, you know, the Thunderbirds um, puppets off TV. And we were in Kmart and he asked me for this rocket. Now I'm pretty sure it was about $5. And I just said, oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. And I showed him my purse and I opened my purse and I said, I don't have money for that today. That's the money for the milkman and that's to buy the oranges and that's to put petrol in the car and but I don't have money for the Thunderbirds rocket today. And he went, oh, okay. And he sort of understood that while I had money in my purse, it wasn't for the rocket. And he knew, he accepted that. I did that with all three of them. I we didn't, it wasn't no. It was, I don't have money for that today. And when Hannah wanted her swimming Olympic Barbie doll, that cost $60, $60 for this wretched doll. We did not have $60 to spend on a Barbie doll for the 2000 Sydney Olympics. So we suggested that she do jobs to earn that money, and she did. And I got the free goggles. And she got the free goggles. That's what goggles. I wanted. <laughs> she got the swimming Olympic Barbie doll that did backstroke in the bathtub and the free goggles. And I think it took her three weeks to earn that money. Now, she was only four years old. She worked her little patootsie off, but she emptied the dishwasher, she set the table, she cleared the table, she took the rubbish out, she helped clean the bathroom, she helped clean the car, she worked in the garden, she helped Grandma do chores, she dusted. She worked her little fingers to the bone, and I think the most she got for any single job was 20 cents, except for... Her uncle Greg. Can't him well. You did con him, Greg. My brother was at my brother came to visit and was sitting down having a cup of tea and she's come, oh, Uncle Greg, would you like me to take your cup for you? And he said, Oh, thank you, sweetheart. That'll be a dollar. And she put her hand out and he gave it to her. I wouldn't have, but he gave it to her. And it went straight. We had a, a peanut butter jar on top of the fridge and all that money as soon we gave it to her. She got paid for each job as soon as it was done, and that money went into the peanut butter jar and the lady at Kmart nearly had a stroke when we emptied the peanut butter jar to pay for that Barbie doll but it was her money and she was buying it so that's what we did yeah all right <laughs> oh dear all right, so jobs at Macca's, Macca's, Aldi, Coles. Can't work at Aldi underage alcohol. Oh, can't work at Aldi underage with the alcohol. Okay, came up to um, take them from 14 and 9 months? 15, 15 and 9 months. No, just 15. Just 15. So 15, they can start work at Kmart. Um, and Kmart's not a bad place for them to work. It's well supervised. They're well, the juniors are well supervised. And um, they learn team building. They learn all sorts of responsibilities that, you know, help them in life, not just in the workplace. So, yeah. Oh, she didn't stop with the Barbie doll because then she decided she wanted the Barbie rollerblades. And we said if she had rollerblades, she had to have the helmet and the elbow and knee pads to go with it. We, we created a little workaholic 
but she's never stopped. So um, she's um, always been independent, haven't you, sweetie? Okay, so, all right. So have I answered all the questions? So far. So far I have. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Just making sure, folks. Because again, we've got that bit of a delay. All right. Okay. Well, um, need to cut your grocery bill. Barb meal plan, pantry, fridge, and freezer challenge. I know you can do it. I know you have enough food. Perhaps just stay out of the growth, stay out of the supermarket. And if you need things like fresh milk or bread or can you get someone to pick them up for you or can you do an order once a week and get it delivered and, yes, you will pay the delivery fee, but if that's saving you money in the long run, it's going to be worth it. Um, think about what you're eating. Um Think about how you're cooking. I know for singles, cooking can be a real, a right real pain and it can get boring because you've either got to do the calculations and cut the recipe down to a single portion or you're going to eat for four, eat it four times. It can be a bit boring. Perhaps we're moving into summer, so that might be a bit easier. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups again. Have a drink of water, folks. Um, moving into summer might be a bit easier because it's more salads um, and in summer you don't feel like desserts and things quite so much. I know in winter I always want something after tea, usually about get to about 7 o'clock and we've had dinner and I'm thinking oh, just, just something. So it might be a muffin or a piece of toast even or something. But in summer I don't do that. We tend to eat more fresh fruit, fruit so make a big bowl of fruit salad and have that for lunch for a couple of days. Nice cream. Nice cream. Nice cream. What's that? It's just banana. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The frozen banana whipped into ice cream, yeah. Um, or yogurt. I know you make yogurt, so you could have yogurt with your fruit salad. Have that for lunch for a few days because that's really cooling as well. And when it's hot and humid, something nice and cool and fresh is always good. Make up a big green salad. What I do, um, if I know we're going to have a run of hot weather, I have um, three big containers with lids and I make up, I chop the lettuce, wash it, put it in the container and then in another little container I'll dice, put diced cucumber, sliced capsicum, I'll slice an onion and put it in the container. It's got a little airtight lid so it doesn't stink the fridge out. Put that all then ready to go then all i've got to do is take some of each of those things out chop up a tomato and we've got green salad i cook up um, a big potato salad and make that up put it in the fridge and that will do us for two or three days with coleslaw i grate the cabbage and the carrot and the onion and toss it all together and i don't put the dressing on until i'm ready to serve it but that will keep for four to five days in an airtight container in the fridge. So that means that I can prepare all the salads for our dinners in one hit. Now, I usually do it on a Monday morning because I don't work Monday. So Monday morning is usually my preparing the veggies and salad ahead type day. And that just means then that it's easier. And often when it's easier, you're not tempted to spend more on the food that you don't really want and you don't really need. Um, keeping um, simple things like um, tins of tuna, tins of salmon if you like salmon, so that you can have a salmon, um, either a salmon and lettuce sandwich. You know my favourite sandwich? Hannah's going to cringe at this. Lettuce. Okay. Spread the bread or the bun or the wrap or whatever with cream cheese instead of butter. Use some cream cheese. I just use the Aldi light cream cheese. And then lettuce and red salmon with mixed with lemon juice and pepper love it it's really nice and it's not very expensive 
um, all those things could um, help bring your grocery budget down. But really, the easiest thing to do is just stay out of the supermarket, use up everything you've had, have even if you're eating really weird meals. We've eaten weird meals a few times when I've been doing um, freezer challenges. And then while you're not spending that money, it's building up in your bank so that when you do go to do your grocery shopping, you can make a list and you can get everything that you need without going over budget. Okay. Um, Jess, thoughts on having a financial advisor for a 30-year-old couple? Why not? If you need it, now there's a difference between a financial advisor and a financial counsellor. So if you can find someone that you're comfortable with, shop around because not all advice is good advice. Um, so shop around, find someone that you're comfortable with, ask, ask friends, family, colleagues, if they've used anyone that they particularly like or can recommend, shop around find someone and get the advice. Because it's just advice. You don't have to take it. And if you do, you don't have to take all of it. You can take what works for you from it and put that into place for you. Um, oh, Kathy, why meal plan a year ahead? Sorry, that's just me. I just, because I do my meal plan, I share my meal plan in the newsletter and in the journal each newsletter each week, journal each month, I decided about three or four years ago to just run through and do a meal plan for the year and it worked so well. I printed it out, took, um, I printed it out in um, landscape, so I took two A4, four A4 sheets, sticky taped it all together, stuck it to the um, top of the fridge and it worked so well. Oh, it was bliss. Right, oh, I'm just going to do this every year from now on. So I do. I just, the meal plan is a guide. Your meal plan is a guide. You don't have to stick to it. But what you'll find is if you have a meal plan, you buy the ingredients to make those things. But ingredients can be used in so many different ways. So you might have ingredients for meatloaf but not feel like meatloaf. But spaghetti and meatballs will do because you can use the meatloaf ingredient to make meatballs and if you've got pasta in the in the cupboard then you've got spaghetti and meatballs or it could be swedish meatballs and make them with a cream gravy serve them with mash really easy meal quick and easy but it's just a different version of your meatloaf that's on your meal plan and you haven't had to buy any extra special ingredients for it because you've already done the shopping for the ingredients on the meal plan that clear as mud too. Sorry. Um, all right. Okay. Yep. Loads of veggies, Barb. A really nice um, a green salad. So lettuce, tomato, capsicum, cucumber. Um, some broccoli florets, if you get the broccoli head and chop up the little florets, single little florets, are really tender and really nice. Or use broccolini if you don't want broccoli. Toss that in. Um, some cheese of some kind for protein, so it might be feta or it could be um, tasty cheese or cheddar or something like that. You don't need to put you don't need to put a dressing on it. But lately, I've taken a liking to the uh, it's a balsamic, I think it's a Coles bals thick balsamic dressing. No, it's Aldi thick balsamic dressing. So good and not very expensive. And you only need a little tiny bit. Little goes a long way. Okay. Um, in my meal plan, Estelle, a fair bit because in winter we eat lots of hot dishes. In summer we eat very few hot dishes, usually just our roast and maybe a spaghetti. pasta dish once a week. The rest of it will be things that we can have with salad. So um, we live on salads and barbecues. That's why I used to say I love daylight saving because daylight saving starts and Wayne takes over the cooking. He barbecues for me. I just give him the stuff and out he goes. 
kitchen stays clean i don't have to cook the meat or whatever meat chicken whatever it is it's all done outside i just do the salads it's really easy and then in winter we have more things more like soups stews casseroles um uh, slow cooker dishes curries things like that that we have with rice or mash or other veggies hot veggies so usually by the end of winter we're all dying for summer to come so we can have salads again and then by the end of salad uh end of salad end of summer we're all dying for hot veggies again all right i just buy the veggies that are in season or use what's growing in the garden yeah Steamed veggies, Barb, if you don't like um, salad, um, steamed veggies um, with just a, a little bit of um, a squeeze of lemon juice over them. Now, if you don't have fresh lemons, you can buy that lemon juice in the bottle. It's actually not bad. Works quite well. Mm -hmm. um, just a little squirt over them. So over um, cauliflower, broccoli, um, sweet potato, carrots, things like that, silver beet, um, goes really well. If you've got silver beet, if you shred it really finely and toss it with a little bit of cooked rice and then drizzle it with your lemon juice, it's really delicious. And the other thing I used to like to do was um, thinly slice the cabbage, put it in the saucepan with just a little bit of water, probably a tablespoon, two tablespoons of water, Put a lid on it just let it steam for a few minutes then and this is really not good for the waistline then i get a knob of butter put the butter in and um, crush a clove of garlic into it and stir it through toss it through and let it fry for a few minutes yum really good swedish meatballs are really good yes did you, make, did you make your cream sauce? It took me a long time to figure out cream sauce was really just a white gravy. It was so simple. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm glad your grandson liked them. It's always nice to see little people eat their meals and not be fussy, I think. <laughs> I don't think so, Jules. <laughs> I don't think you get my husband to do a barbecue show. <laughs> He's really good at barbecuing, but I don't think he did the show. Uh, I can ask him, though. Um, husband's salad, we tend to do whichever, whatever has cheap ingredients at the farm. Yeah. You know? And look, who's to say that um, veggies have to be cooked or veggies salad has to be raw? I'll eat raw potato any day. Yeah. My kids love raw veggies. But you can do hot salads. There's some recipes in the recipe file, some really nice hot salads. So, uh, she, I'm getting the wind up here, sorry, folks. I'm gone over time. Uh, his train. Oh, Narelle, if you're starting, no, this is a train free zone. Narelle just said we forget to, to talk about trains. Train free zone. Seriously, train free zone. Why do you feel like a fairy bar? Why? Is, no, you don't. You don't feel like a fairy. You're just not well and it's getting to you. It's nothing. You're not a failure at all. Um, oh, 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 my Swedish meatballs recipe. Well, there you go. And the cream sauce, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> really nice, isn't it? Oh, I love those meatballs. Okay, guys, well, she's giving me the hurry up, hurry up, because she seems to think that you'll get sick of me. So I shall go. It's going to be a wild, we're normally away this weekend. We usually, this weekend, we usually go away until next weekend um, for the week. We go camping. And I was feeling a bit, mm, a bit depressed that we weren't. And then the weather, <laughs> the weather's changing on Saturday, and I'm like, so glad I'm going to be home with a roof and a floor and four walls instead of a tent. <laughs> so um, it, it will be, it'll be what it will be. If you need rain, I hope you get it. If you don't need rain, I hope you don't get it. I hope the wind stays down for everybody. Have a lovely uh, weekend, folks, and I shall see you again next Tuesday. Don't know yet.
don't know what we'll talk about yes no i don't know what i'll talk about yet i was thinking next tuesday yes cup day on tuesday so if no, you're in, if you're in melbourne and having a nice um enjoying a public holiday have a wonderful day i understand it's going to be dry on tuesday so you never know okay i shall go but you know if you've got any more questions ask them in the comments underneath after we finish and i'll do my best to answer them for you and i'll see you on tuesday bye folks